Hi, this is Ivy. This is my first English video on YouTube for all my English speaking friends. I started my channel during the pandemic of COVID 19 in France, two days after official lockdown. Because before that, I spent so much time on YouTube watch all different people talking about the COVID 19. Some are true, some are fake. Some rumors. So I say, if I believe I have enough information, why just share my voices and also let my friends know what is going on in France? And let's talk about COVID 19. I started to share some of my videos to my friends who don't speak Chinese. I made subtitles, but some of them complain my subtitles were not that good, it's too fast in certain sentences, it went so fast. So now I'm making my first one in English for you. Still, I'm talking about COVID 19. In these days, how could we avoid this topic? I'm from Wuhan. I'm proud to be Wuhanese, but a lot of people never know where is Wuhan, what's this city. But now I guess everyone knew it. I didn't want my hometown become famous in this way. But at least I'm happy now they remember it. The most question I got during this pandemic, when they knew I was from Wuhan, is that everybody in your family okay? At the beginning, I was a little sensitive. I was like, come on, there are 9 to 10 million people living in Wuhan. How could they got disease? But later on, I was coming down. I know they, they just show their concern to me. I shouldn't be that sensitive. But that means how people see. Things happening in Wuhan. There are lots of rumors saying that body you can find all over the different hospitals and there are not in, enough bags to capture the, the dead bodies. And you also saw some videos, not actually in my hometown, but in China, how policemen drag people to the quarantine hospital or quarantine hotels. And the second question generally people will ask what do you think about the cases? So, the real case must be much bigger than that. Some people say 10 times, or some people say 5 times. I don't know. You and I, can, I was living in Wuhan during this time. I don't think anybody can give the right number. Including myself, I think the number is underestimated. But isn't it the case all over the world? Not every country has the capability to test every possible case. But people seem more sensitive to anything the Chinese government has been done. For myself, the death number was definitely underestimated. So, there are a lot of cases died outside the hospital without the diagnosis of COVID 19, and they died in certain type of pneumonia. So, I think it's COVID 19, but they're not counted as confirmed cases. So, the Chinese government could be more transparent to show the total number of deaths during this pandemic, in, especially in Wuhan, compared to the normal winter death number. But I guess it's really hard to do so. But I think the number is underestimated. But still, that's not mean there are dead people on the streets, in the hospital, everywhere. Some rumors saying, People fainted on the street and then dead immediately. It's like zombie land in Wuhan after the lockdown. That's not the, tr the, the real cases. So, during my video in Chinese, I mentioned the Chinese people only look at the bad sides of the certain Western media, like the New York Times, but they probably ignore New York Times publish the article about China saved the time for the Western. Countries that the Western wasted. But as Western people, you also need to remember New York Times Twitter at the same day, a two article about the lockdown policy in China and in Italy. For China, they say 60 million people sacrifice their liberty, their living rights to contain the diseases. 
and then for Italy, they lock down Milan, Venice, and the north part of Italy to sacrifice to contain the coronavirus in Europe. That's double standard. So it seems like everybody is biased on what information they want to know. The Chinese is biased, the Western media also. I'm not saying I'm very objective, but at the least I try my best to read as much news as I can to get different information as different perspective. Yes, it's true that China has a very strong sense census and a lot of information might not be freely disseminated but can you say the dictatorship in China Chinese people have no freedom I wouldn't say that so yesterday evening I watched a video American girl interview a Canadian guy living in China and ask his opinion about all his experience during the lockdown time in China I would recommend here and here, if you have time, look at it. It's one hour long, but you can learn something from his talk. During the interview of that American girl and uh, Canadian guy, one of the questions I was shocked, the girl was asking, do Chinese people drink beer? Are the, I mean, Chinese, are they drinking beer? What do you do in that dictator country? Well, so you're living under a dictatorship. You know, we're all thinking, oh man, why would you want to live like that? Well, actually, that Canadian guy owned a pub, on a bar in Shenzhen, the city next to Hong Kong. I mean, that's amazing that you have a brew pub there. You know, when we think of China, we think communism. And we think <laughs> that, you know, like, no freedom. What do people still think we are? The Chinese people still living as what they thought in their television 50 years ago. Here, I recommend a book called The Factfulness from a Swedish author. This book mentioned people need to learn some factfulness repeatedly. Some of the things you learned when you're young, they have already changed. But then the people's way of thinking just, it's still that bad. And I just cannot believe sometimes I find it's very hard to discuss with some of the Western people, very biased opinion. You know, I grew up with so my teenager band, I love Blur, I love Cranberries, Oasis, even Backstreet Boy or Spicy Girls. That's all my teenager memories. Do you think that's very different from the teenagers who are my same age in the US or in, in Europe? I read a lot of books translated almost just a year after the book had been published in the Western world. And I swear I watch much more movies than uh, standard European people. There are a lot of ways in China you can get what people call the freedom. And a lot of people say, you do this illegally. I don't know. So yes, at the moment, Google, Facebook, YouTube are banned in China. But a lot of people, younger people, even teenagers, my cousin, she's 14, 15 years old. Last year when I was complaining, my VPN was not working very well. She said, wait. Then she got another free account from her friends and said, you in this one, it must be much better. And I watched YouTube smoothly, like when I am now in France. And people say, that's illegal. No, the VPN is not illegal. I mean, it's in a gray zone. For example, my company is a Dutch company or a Belgian company. I, we have a company VPN. During the time when I was in China, in December and January, I used the computer for work, but then I noticed that I can use in that VPN to also go to YouTube and Google, whatever I can use. Is that illegal? No. A lot of pharmaceutical company or bank have their own VPN, and it is illegal in China. Maybe not legal, but at least it's a gray zone. But some people say, oh, you're using VPN to go to YouTube, you break the law, you should be sent to jail. No, at least from all I heard or see from the internet, no one has been sent to the jail because of using VPN. So all the information, it is available. Maybe you need some trick like using VPN, but a lot of young people know how to do it. I don't want to repeat what that Canadian guy has already said in the video, but I just want to share my opinion. Since people have a lot of biased uh, view, 
Chinese, the Chinese government. And so whatever the Chinese government have been done was wrong. And they can always criticize what should be right, what should be wrong. But just think carefully. If this, this disease has happened in any of the other country, is any country can really contain the disease in a control and not let it spread all over the world. I doubt it, really. So at the time of lockdown, it was during the Chinese New Year. And if you know a little bit, the Chinese New Year has been the biggest immigration events during the whole year of, on this planet. So it's like in the United States, the Thanksgiving, everyone needs to share the time with the family. Or in Europe, the December of uh, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. So the Chinese New Year, everybody needs to go back to their hometown to spend time with the family. And not everyone stay at their hometown for their business, for their work. And so everybody needs to travel. So without very strict lockdown in my hometown, there are more people gonna live. I know there are a lot of problems at the beginning because some people they're planning to leave town or they just transit in my hometown and they're all locked down there. Some people they don't have enough money to pay for the hotel and some poor people they cannot afford the food the, the hotel requests for. Later on, there are a lot of uh, community service to help them, and there are a lot of volunteer to help them. But at the beginning, I admit, there are a lot of problems. I don't need to mention, both my parents, they're cancer patients. They need a lot of medicines. And with that lockdown, strict lockdown, they were out of uh, supply for a little bit. We all complain. We all think this is a human rights disaster. But you think it on the other way. If there are no such a strict lockdown, the whole country, the whole China, would be in a worse situation than today. I know sometimes people think the way I talk about China, I defend what people think. For example, ten years, more than ten years living in Europe, a lot of my friends they will always ask me about eating dogs and the one-child policy. I'm not defending China, but I try to say some positive things about what happened in China. Some of people, they didn't comment on me, but I can see behind the eyes, they would say, oh my God, this stupid girl, she just brainwashed by the Communist Party. Did I? <laughs> I just try to be more objective. I love China, but I must admit, the Chinese government could do much better. They can have much less censorship, give people more freedom of speech and provide the transparency of the governance and extra but we still need to admit they also helped China to get another type of freedom economic freedom isn't that also basic human rights? I think economic freedom is a foundation for political freedom it's a stepwise approach but I guess those people who are already living in political freedom with very high economic freedom, they would think, you know, that's not the same. You could get it at the same time. I don't want to compare China to India. Let's say India is certain more political freedom than China, but economically, look at how poor people living there and look at health condition and living standard. So which one is more important for for human beings? And talking about back to the book Factfulness, one of the interesting phenomena in the book the author talks about it is living standards across different income countries. And a lot of people blame China and India made the most CO2 emission and made the most pollution. But in his book he mentioned if you divided all those CO2 emission and pollution by capital. China and the Indian ranked way behind the most of the Western countries. So when people in Western country enjoy your comfort of life, 
using washing machine, dishwash, air condition, heating to live better. You think those people living in China or India or some other country need to reduce using all the electricity, not using heating, not using air condition, those things live like middle Europe to save the planet? That's not fair. Everybody wants to have a better life. And we need to be fair, make this world eco-development and ecological friendly. So everybody needs to make an effort and not just a developing country who's supposed to get the most pollution, the cause of the, the planet. So right now I just want to say no size would be right. The single perspective is always wrong. We cannot look at the world using your single perspective. And we should have a toolbox to help you to understand how the world is working. At the moment, it becomes just so extreme. Everything the Chinese have been done was wrong. And all the other countries need to create their own way or follow some other suggestion. Let's go back, back to COVID-19. No country can stay alone in their own way to defend this disease. We need to work together. Imagine if one country not doing any intervention, let the disease spread out, the other country do whatever they can. At the end, if the world is gonna go back to the previously globalization, people travel around, that's all gonna even out whatever the intervention any country created. So everybody needs to work together to combat this disease. We're not expert for everything. And you and your expert be humble about what you could say, what you think. And you cannot just watch or listen to some videos of people who support your idea. We need to get criticized. That's how we should be mature and look things from a different angle. I hope my video makes you understand more about my personality and also understand my way of thinking how we could compete to win this war against COVID-19. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.